It's finally time for the last video on Modern Horizon 2 cards. We've seen some weird cards, some janky cards, some super powerful cards. There's really only one word to describe this set. Damn! And now we're here for the final four commander combos. If you've enjoyed this journey and you want even more commander content in the future, then make sure to hit subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started. Our first combo uses a card that was probably made for limited, and almost nobody has talked about it at all. Flay Essence lets us exile a creature or planeswalker and then gain life equal to the number of counters on it. This card was not designed to be a combo piece, but if we use it on a creature that has infinite counters on it, then it will gain us infinite life. As far as I know, there isn't a super easy way to put infinite counters on someone else's creature. If you can think of a way, then let me know in the comments. So the plan is to put infinite counters on one of our own creatures, and then use that to gain infinite life. I know what you're thinking. Tofu, if we have a creature with infinite counters on it, then why wouldn't we just hit people with it? See, the problem is that would make us win the game. Where's the fun in that? Then why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you! What would I do without you? No. No, you, you complete me. But for real though, if we had a creature with infinite plus one plus one counters on it, then it would make sense to just hit people. But putting infinite plus one plus one counters on a creature is a little tough to do. That's why we're going to try and find a different type of counter. One that's really easy to get infinitely many of. To figure out this combo, I pulled up a list of every single type of counter in Magic, and it turns out that there are 147 types of counters. And wouldn't you know it, the 146th option on the list just happens to work perfectly here. Freylise's Winds is a 4 mana enchantment that says whenever a permanent becomes tapped, put a wind counter on it. If a permanent with a wind counter on it would untap during its controller's untap step, remove all wind counters from it instead. Normally, this card just makes it so that we can only tap things every other turn, but it also happens to be a really easy way to put infinite counters on a creature. We can use Seeker of Skybreak, which is a creature that can tap to untap a creature. If we make the Seeker tap to untap itself infinite times, then that will give it infinite wind counters so that we can flay essence the Seeker for infinite life. Lucky for us, there just so happens to be a commander that's green and black and that already runs Freylise's winds. And that commander is Tyam Luminous Enigma. Freylise's Winds works great with this commander because we can use Tyam's ability to remove the wind counters from our creatures and that way they'll still untap. 99% of the time, Flay Essence will just be a removal spell. But if you're playing Tyam Freylise's Winds stacks featuring Seeker of Skybreak, then you will sometimes be able to pull off this infinite life combo out of nowhere. While it's not quite as good, I should also mention that there's a blue version of this combo. We can replace Freylise's Winds with Temporal Distortion, which is basically the same thing. And we can replace Seeker of Skybreak with a Fetto Alchemist. I just couldn't find a good home for this combo in blue, so that's why we went with the green one. Our next combo is actually really competitive, and it uses a pretty innocuous uncommon that hasn't made a huge buzz yet. Specimen Collector is a 5 mana 2 1 that makes a 1 1 squirrel and a 0 3 crab, and when it dies, it lets you make a copy of one of your tokens. This card seems pretty bad, but it's absolutely nuts. To go infinite with this card, all we have to do is make a token copy of it and have a sack outlet. If we make a token copy of our Specimen Collector, then we can sack the original one to make another copy of the token. Then we can sack the first token to make a copy of the second token, and so on. Not to mention, we also get infinite squirrels and crabs. So how can we make a token copy of our Specimen Collector? Cackling Counterpart and Quasi-Duplicate are probably the most straightforward ways, but there are also some commanders that can do it. Arami of the Dead Tide can encore it back to the board, giving us three tokens, which would be enough to combo off. And Orvar the Allform can make a token copy of it if we just target it with a spell. But the best choice is definitely Anala. If we're playing an Anala deck, then Specimen Collector with a Sack Outlet is just a two-card combo using Anala's Eminence ability, and that's pretty insane. To be fair, that really says more about how ridiculous Eminence is than anything, but Specimen Collector is still really good. Buckle up, folks, because we're going way downhill for these last two combos. 
They're really bad. I'm not even gonna pretend like they're good because they're undeniably terrible. But they're cool, so we're gonna talk about them anyway. This next combo is built around Break the Ice. This sorcery lets you pay 2 to destroy a snow land or a land that can make colorless mana. This isn't super interesting in Commander because we already have Sinkhole, which just lets us destroy any land for 2 mana and nobody plays Sinkhole. What makes Break the Ice interesting is the overload cost. If you pay 6 mana, you get to destroy every snow land and every land that can tap for colorless. I am personally a huge fan of this card, because the fact that it exists means that there's finally a real cost to playing Snow Basics. Up until now, Snow Basics were just strictly better than normal basics, because of cards like Arkham's Astrolab, Dead of Winter, Scred, and Scrying Sheets. The only reason to not play Snow Basics was they cost more. I know Wizards tried to fix this issue with Redain, but almost nobody plays that card. Break the Ice is the first real snow land hate card we've seen that's actually playable, and I'm all for it. But what do you mean there's no snow hate? What about melting? Get out! What? Get out of the room! Get out of the room! I don't understand. I don't understand. Run around the map! Out! Wow! So what interesting thing can we do with this card? The most obvious option is we can find a way to make all of our opponents land snow, and then blow them up. But it turns out that there just isn't a great way to do this. Our best options are Arkham's Weather Vane and Rhyme Feather Owl. Arkham's Weather Vane is just a terrible, terrible card. And the problem with Rhyme Feather Owl is that we need snow mana to use its ability, which means that we probably have to be running snow lands ourselves. So the snow option is pretty much out. But there is another possibility. We can try to find a way to make all of our opponents' lands tap for colorless mana. Now the rules here get a little complicated. We need to make it so that our opponents' lands could produce colorless mana. But that doesn't mean that they have to have an actual ability that makes colorless mana. The card Exotic Orchard makes mana of any color that an opponent's land could produce. And if we check the rulings, it says that when determining what colors of mana your opponent's lands could produce, Exotic Orchard takes into account any applicable replacement effects that would apply to those lands' mana abilities. What this means is if an opponent can tap their land for green mana, but there's a replacement effect that says if you tap a land for green, it makes colorless instead, then that land could produce colorless mana. So all we need is a really cheap card that has a replacement effect that just makes all of our opponent's lands tap for colorless. The question is, does a card like that even exist? Kind of. My first thought was Damping Sphere. This could work, but we would have to somehow make all of our opponent's lands tap for 2 without making our own lands tap for 2, and there isn't a feasible way to do that. But there is another option. Pale Moon is a 2 mana instant that says until end of turn, if a player taps a non-basic land for mana, it produces colorless mana instead of any other type. So if we're only running basics, and our opponents are mostly running non-basics, then Pale Moon into Overloaded Break the Ice would be a one-sided Armageddon. That just sounds like Ruination. With extra steps. Ooh la la, someone's gonna get laid in college. Yes, this does have the same result as just playing a Ruination. But hear me out, Ruination is a mean card. People might get salty if you just pay 4 mana to destroy their lands. But nobody can get mad at you if you beat them using a Pale Moon combo. And now for our last terrible combo. This one requires a lot of steps, so pay close attention here. Step 1, we need to blow up every non-land permanent on the board. Easy. Step 2, we play Blanket of Night to turn all lands into swamps. Step 3, we play Korma Spell to make all swamps into 1-1s. One -ones. And step 4, we play Knight of Souls Betrayal, which will make all 1-1s one -ones into 0-0s. Zero -zeros. Alright, so that's the setup. Are you with me so far? You're mad! Thank goodness for that, because if I wasn't, this would probably never work. This super realistic game state has reached a point where nobody has any permanence, except the three we just played, and if anybody ever plays a land, it just dies as a state-based action because it has zero toughness. In other words, nobody can do anything for the rest of the game. Which means if you find a way to do something, like play any creature, then you're gonna win because you can just hit people with it until they die. It might seem impossible to get out of this lock, but if you run a special card from Modern Horizons 2, 
you can actually start making mana and get back into the game. The card I'm talking about is of course Power Depot. Power Depot has Modular 1, so it'll enter the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it. That means it won't die, because the counter will make it a 2-2, and then Knight of Souls Betrayal will make it back into a 1-1. While everyone else is stuck in the lock, you can use your 1 land to eventually play a Soul Ring or something, and then maybe play a 3-drop creature and just hit people with it until you win. Yes, this combo is bad. Power Depot is a super interesting land, but it's really hard to find a cool thing to do with its modular ability. If that combo was too janky, there is another option. You could just play Power Depot in a Noyan Dar deck, and then when you cast an instant or sorcery, you can turn it into a 4 4 creature instead of a 3 3. Now that's some value. Trivia time! The question from last video was what is the only mechanic that has an 11 on the storm scale? If you guessed banding, then you were super close, but the answer is actually bands with other, which is a special subtype of banding. Banding is the most obscure and confusing mechanic that's ever been made, and I don't really know exactly how it works, so I'm not going to explain it. Bands with other is somehow an even worse and more obscure version of it. In fact, it was so confusing that apparently they had to completely change how it worked in order to make it less confusing, despite the fact that nobody even used the ability. As of now, the only creature that even has a bands with other ability is Old Fogey, and he's not even a legal card. The only other cards that have the words bands with other on them are these five terrible lands, Teleria, this wolf guy, and this weirdly sexy oof. Hello. It's me. So yeah, I feel pretty confident that this mechanic is never coming back. And now for today's trivia question. Today's question is how do you pronounce the name of this commander? I'm just kidding, everybody knows it's his Mora Nomartica Dice in the Kuldakar. I don't know why everyone's pretending like it's so hard. Okay, now for the real question. Since I had to look through a list of all 147 types of counters in Magic, today's question is which of the following is not a real type of counter? Hit subscribe if you don't want to miss the answer in the next video. We're done with Modern Horizons 2 spoiler stuff, so I'll be going back to some more general content soon. Thanks for watching, Tofu out.